Hi, I'm Balthazar Mercado, MCU Product Marketing Manager for Renaissance Electronics Mass Market Group. And today I'm going to take you through a quick walkthrough of the new RL78 L12 RPB or Renaissance Promotion Board. And with that, let's take a look at what's inside the kit. Of course, you'll notice the PCB board with the integrated LCD screen. Next is the USB cable that will be used to communicate and power the PCB board. Also in little piece of the puzzle is this little screwdriver set that you'll use to adjust the potentiometer on this board. Lastly is the CD-ROM. This CD contains the Eclipse-based IDE software called e -squared Studio, also a free GNU compiler, also low-power example software and demos, applet, which is our driver generator software, which will allow you to quickly program any of the peripherals on our MCUs. All the project files are provided, which you can debug in e -squared Studio using the on-chip debug feature. With that, let's get started. Now, once you've installed all the software onto your PC and you've opened up the GUI, the first thing you're going to notice is you start off on the Home tab. From here, we're going to make sure we connect your PC to the PCB. Simply hit the Connect button. And there's two things you should notice. One is the firmware version comes up, and the second is on the PCB itself. The name of the demo comes scrolling across. This tells you you now have good communication between the two boards. Another thing you should always see, and it should be the default, is the Renaissance Starter Kit Virtual UART on whatever COM channel you happen to plug in your USB cable. Now, the only other thing we have on here on this particular screen is the LCD demo. To start it, simply hit the Start button, and you'll notice a little pop-up window saying LCD demo is now running. Now, if we look back on our PCB screen, what this demo is, it's simply a HVAC interface demo. The temperature, which is controlled with the potentiometer here, can range from 40 degrees C down to zero. When you're below 30 degrees C and above 10 degrees C, the system is normally is operating normally. As you can see, all it does is displays the current temperature. What happens when you drop below 10 degrees C? It now warns you that you're in a cold condition and the heating system is engaging. Now the opposite is true when we go up above 30 degrees C. When this happens, it tells you you're now in a hot condition and the cooling system is engaging. This is a simple built-in demo to show the flexibility of the LCD controls. Now in order to stop this demo, we go back to the pop-up window and simply click on Stop. Now after the Home tab, we have the Data Logger tab, Real Time Clock tab, Memory Demo tab, Low Power tab, and Self Test tab. Now each one of these tabs has its own unique set of demos that showcase that particular feature. Now, let's start with the Data Logger tab. Here, we're showcasing the ADC features. On the first graph, it will actually record and monitor the ADC voltage, which you can select using the potentiometer here. That actual voltage reading will also be shown in this window called Snapshot. Right below this is the actual internal voltage reference. When we select Start, you'll see that the graph is now monitoring the ADC voltage. And as I said, on the PCB board, you could change this by simply selecting or changing the potentiometer. As you can see, it can range down to approximately 0 volts, all the way up to 5 volts. On the graph below, we're monitoring the MCU temperature. This is using the onboard temp sensor. And it gives you a snapshot every one second here, telling you the temperature that it's recording. Beyond that, we can clear any one of these graphs individually by selecting clear, there, or clear for the temperature. And it'll restart the recording. Also, if you hit stop and then restart the demo, it'll automatically clear both graphs as well. With that, we'll go on to the next demonstration. On the Real Time Clock tab, we have three unique demonstrations that work with our RTC. The first one is Set RTC Time. It simply synchronizes your RPB time with that of your host PC. So we simply click on Sync, and you'll see that the time on the PCB board has changed to match that of the PC. The second function is the alarm function. 
Here, as the name implies, we can set the alarm by setting the hour and minutes that we want the alarm to occur. And we could also choose which day or ever we want it to happen. So in this case, we'll select every day, set the alarm. You'll notice the alarm icon is now set on the GUI. As you can see now, the alarm condition has been met. So you see the blinking alarm clock on the GUI, and you also see the words alarm on the LCD screen. In order to stop this demonstration, all you have to do is select stop alarm or press switch three on the PCB board. So we'll just stop the alarm. The third demonstration using the real time clock is the interval interrupt. What this does is you control the blinking interval of LED one on the PCB board. The default is usually half a second. So this time we'll select one second. You could also set it for half second, one second, minute, hour, week, and month. Of course, I don't recommend anything higher than one minute for a demonstration. Now we'll hit enable. And you'll see the blinking speed has changed on LED one. This just shows you one simple function of the RTC clock. In order to stop this demo, simply click on disable. Now we'll go on to the next demo. Now in the memory demo tab, we can enable and disable the DMAC writing to RAM. We start this off, you'll also see the CRC is running at the same time. This is the cyclic redundancy check. This feature can also be enabled or disabled in the self-test tab. By simply going to self-test, in this area, the CRC test can be enabled or disabled. If we select disabled, you'll notice back on the memory tab and under memory content, you see that the CRC has disappeared since it's been disabled. Now this is a hardware feature of the MCU. Now the second demonstration under memory demo is the data RAM content. Here, you can write any value of, to the RAM at any time. And one of the other features that we have to demonstrate is the guard. Now we can enable RAM guard, and by doing so, this is a hardware feature built onto the MCU. If we go back to the demo, if we try to change the value of the RAM at any time, that's now been disabled as an option, safeguarding your RAM content. Now, also on the self-test tab, we have the option to test the switches, the hardware switches that is on the PCB, which is switch one, switch two, and switch three. So by enabling this test, we can now go and push the button. After I push switch one, you'll notice that the letters change from green to red, indicating that it did detect the button push. Again, I can check it for two or three. It's a simple hardware test of the board. Here on the low power tab, we'll have three modes that will allow you to evaluate the low current consumption of the device. In order to do that, we connect our multimeter to connector five as shown here. And these three modes that are being demonstrated are the halt mode, the stop mode, and the snooze mode. And we'll get to that one a little bit later. When we first connect the multimeter to the PCB, you'll notice it is in run, it's in normal run mode. So this is giving you a reading of about 3.6 milliamps. So this is with LCD running, CPU running, and all peripherals are on. Now we can go back to the GUI and select the halt mode. Once we hit the halt button, we're now in halt mode and you'll see that the current has dropped significantly. Here, the halt mode is only shutting down the CPU. All of the peripherals LCD are on. Here you can see we get a reading of 0.78 milliamps and we can release this mode by clicking on the release button. Now to put it into stop mode, we simply click on the stop button. But in the stop mode, we do have an option in order to turn on or leave on the LCD screen itself. In this case, we're going to leave it on since we want to see what's going on. Now we hit stop. You'll notice a pop-up menu comes up letting you know you're in the stop mode. It also gives you a brief description of the different modes you can be in. It also gives you the transition between these different modes as well. Now, as you'll notice, our current has dropped down significantly in stop mode, so we have to adjust our meter in order to get a good reading. So now we're down to two microamps. In order to exit this mode, simply select any button to exit. Once you click on it, you'll notice 
the screen goes back to normal. Now the next low power demonstration mode is what we call the snooze mode, which is unique to the RL78 family. Here, the MCU will wake on a trigger from the ADC. You can set the limit, and this limit can range anywhere from zero to five volts. In this case, when you select auto limit, it will automatically set it at a plus or minus half a volt from the current setting. The current setting is controlled by your potentiometer here. So in this case, it's set at an upper limit of four volts and a lower limit of three volts. You can also select the interval that you want this measured from at half a second, one second, one minute, hour, week, and month. Again, we don't recommend anything over a minute for a demo. So in this case, let's just say one second. Once you enter snooze mode, again, you'll notice a pop-up window that comes up, letting you know that you're in snooze mode. Again, it gives you a brief description of the other power options and the transition between them. And of course, you'll notice that our meter is now reading very low, so we have to adjust the unit. And again, we're down to, it's usually in the low microamp to nanoamp ranges, depending on the modes. To exit the snooze mode, we have to increase the voltage on the ADC to over or under the limit. So in this case, we'll increase the limit on the ADC, and you'll see on the GUI, the snooze mode window has disappeared. This means you've now exited the snooze mode demo. And you saw the meter go from the low current to the higher current. And that concludes the walkthrough of the RL78 L12 RPB. Now you've seen all the great demos that come on this kit, so, but if you have any further questions, I welcome you to go to the website listed below. Here, you'll also find the link to all of our distributors, Future, Abnet, Arrow, and DigiKey, where you can get one of these great kits of your own. And with that, I thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you.